Welcome to section four of fungi. This is our fungi overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Paracoccidioides brasiliensis, which you can see right here. This scene will take place as Captain South America protects the Brazilian embassy from harm. You can tell that it's the Brazilian embassy because of the Brazilian flag blowing in the wind. Anyway, the Brazil theme should help you remember that this image is all about Paracoccidioides brasiliensis. If you look at Captain South America's shield, you can see that it has little protruding edges that resemble the captain wheel formation that may be seen via microscopy. So the budding yeast of Paracoccidioides may exhibit what's known as a captain's wheel appearance. This is an image of the characteristic captain's wheel. You can see that this looks kind of like the captain's wheel of a boat or the shield I just showed of Captain South America. Now you can see that we've added a picture of South America to Captain South America's shirt. I guess it makes sense that he has this on his shirt because he is Captain South America, right? In any case, these references to South America should help you remember that Paracoccidioides is endemic to Latin America. All right, now you can see that we've added some alien invaders attempting to destroy our hero. And as you can see, these creatures kind of resemble butterflies. Look at those butterfly wings. Just like in our last several videos, the butterfly reference is here to help you remember that Paracoccidioides is a dimorphic fungus that is a mold at cold temperatures and a yeast at warm temperatures. Notice that one of the alien butterfly creatures has taken this poor granny as a hostage. The granny is here to help you remember that Paracoccidioides is associated with granuloma formation. Also notice that the granny has her hand up to her mouth as if coughing. She must be allergic to these evil butterfly creatures. Anyway, the cough is here to help you remember that Paracoccidioides causes a pulmonary infection. However, this is often asymptomatic. To remember that this is often asymptomatic, just think of this grandma who has been unharmed and will likely be saved by Captain South America. If we turn our attention to the right side of the image, you can see that an innocent civilian has been hurt by these aliens and is now laying on a stretcher. This is our symbol for a compromised immune system and is here to help you remember that immunocompromised individuals who become infected with Paracoccidioides are at risk of developing disseminated disease. You can see that the medic is helping this injured man and he has a service Dalmatian dog at his side who is also helping. The Dalmatian with the liver spot is here to help you remember that Paracoccidioides causes hepatosplenomegaly. Also notice that there is a beaded net full of supplies next to the medic. This is here to help you remember that Paracoccidioides causes lymphadenopathy. All right, now let's talk about treatment. First, notice that we've shown the granny wearing a shawl with the letter A on it. This is our recurring symbol for azol medications and is here to help you remember that local infections should be treated with azol medications, such as itraconazole or voriconazole. Finally, notice that we've shown another alien coming out of the water along with some frogs or amphibians. Underneath the water, is a portal to the alien world. So this is where all these evil creatures are spawning from. There happen to be several frogs from their world that also made the trip, and we can see two of them escaping near the guy in the stretcher. These amphibians jumping around are here to help you remember that systemic infections should be treated with amphotericin B. Notice that we've intentionally made the frogs near the stretcher to help you associate this medication with disseminated disease. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 27-year-old male with a history of HIV presents to the physician due to swollen bumps in his neck, armpits, and groin that began two days ago. He states that he just returned home from a trip to South America and is worried he may have contracted an illness while traveling. His temperature is 38.9 degrees Celsius or 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Physical examination reveals lymphadenopathy and hepatosplenomegaly. Microscopic visualization of which of the following will most likely be present in a tissue sample taken from this patient. A. Broad-based budding. B. Spherules filled with endospores. C. Macrophages filled with fungi. Or D. Budding yeast protruding from a ring-like structure. Okay, hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient has HIV, which is suggestive of a compromised immune system. He also recently traveled to South America and is presenting with lymphadenopathy and hepatosplenomegaly. Collectively, these findings should make you think of a paracoccidioides infection. So the correct answer is D, budding yeast protruding from a ring-like structure. Again, this is an image of the characteristic captain's wheel. However, these type of buzzwords rarely show up on step one. So you should also be able to get these questions right if the question writer is describing this microscopic feature. As you can see, it looks like a ring with budding yeast coming off of it. From the image, recall that Captain South America's shield right here is here to help you remember that the budding yeast of Paracoccidioides may exhibit what's known as a captain's wheel appearance. 
A is incorrect because this is describing Blastomyces, but this is not endemic to South America. Recall that Blastomyces is common in the eastern and central parts of the U.S. near the Great Lakes area. So A is incorrect. B is also incorrect because this is describing coccidiomycosis, which is endemic to the southwestern United States. Finally, C is incorrect because this is describing histoplasmosis, which is endemic to the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys. So again, the correct answer is D, budding yeast protruding from a ring-like structure. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know regarding Paracoccidioides brasiliensis.